Hey, I'm Jay from the Cub Scouts. Welcome back to another episode of 60 Parsecs. The first episode was all fun and games. You know, it was cute seeing me, you know, not know what to do, but no more. I have to be that dude. We have to get an ending right here. This is my serious face. I know. It's not nice to look at, it's not pleasant to see, but I have to do it for the good of mankind. We have to get a good ending in this episode, so no more talking, guys. We're just gonna jump right into it. If you guys are cool with that and you're down with that, everybody get ready and buckle up, because here we go. We got this, guys. We didn't play as Emmett, and he wasn't part of our team in the first episode, but he is gonna be our good luck charm. I am not ending this video. This is gonna be a one-take J situation, guys. I'm not gonna end this video until we get a good ending. I'm not gonna do it. I can't do it. For all you guys out there, I have to get a good ending. But anyway, we are gonna dump these guys in here. Let me grab this soup right here. Should I grab this crafting kit? I think I should. I think I should grab all the crafting kits. So, let's get this. Grab it. Okay. Grab that. And what else am I gonna get? I'm gonna get all the crew members, I think. They go crazy really fast, though. I don't like that. That shit makes me crazy. Who's in here? The tape's in here. And the socks in here so we can have a good time on those lonely nights. You know what I'm saying, guys? I hope you don't know what I'm saying because if you're young, you should not know what I'm saying about that. Oh, my God. I need the last crew member. Hold on. I'm a coming. Daddy's coming, Tom Thompson. Get him. Go down. Go down. Go down. We got this. All right. We're just going to chill there. There you go. <laughs> he jumped in right away. So this is our second run, guys. Let the quest for a good ending begin. Day one, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to do my best to get an ending in one try. I got to put my game face on. And we already read this, so we don't need to do that. So we got to give our speech. And Emmett, he's very intelligent. He was a chemistry teacher. And it shows right here. I didn't notice that the first time, but it shows the tally marks right here on the top right. You guys see that? So we are going to make an intelligent speech. And nobody needs to eat. So we're going to pull the lever. And then we're good to go. But it says, you knew exactly what to say. Your convincing speech was more than enough to prove your worth as the captain of the last human crew in the universe. Well, that's good to know. That was quite a performance, Captain. Your crew started cheering even before you were finished with the speech. Long live the captain! Fill the cabin. If any sound could travel through the soundless void outside the hull of your ship, that would be it. One thing is for sure. You are ready for any challenge this galaxy throws at you. Okay, and we have the crafting module. We are gonna craft a phone. Because we're gonna need to make contact with somebody. I don't know. We gotta ET phone home this bitch. Long-term space travel presents many risks to one's physical well-being. From muscular atrophy to laziness to diets notoriously high in sodium. I'm concerned about the decline I've seen in the entire crew's physical fitness since our little sojourn began. I recommend a daily regimen of movements that use only your own body weight. You don't need any equipment for those. Just gravity. Or artificial gravity. Any volunteers for a workout? Well, baby Bronco's a huge bitch, so we are gonna confirm that decision. And we are good to go, because we're already crafting a phone. I don't know how long that's gonna take, but we need to make contact with somebody. It's kinda like in 60 seconds, whenever you answer the phone, and then those twins come and save you. We need something like that. But it says, baby's form was impeccable. Pull-ups, planks, squats, and lunges in this environment? He even added weight by lifting the spare parts for the shuttle. Sweaty and roaring, baby crushed the workout like an empty can of soup. The automated system predicted benefits for being a model Astro Citizen. A hidden dispenser opened and spit out two soup cans. I'm sorry to report there are only two surplus cans hidden aboard the ship. Or are they? Okay, so we got two cans of soup. And we also got the communicator. Why don't you just call it a phone? Why you gotta be all high tech call it a communicator? Okay, so I kinda wanna upgrade the communicator. But we need four more of the batteries. So we're gonna recycle. And let me see what it gives us. I want to see which one gives us, like, the chemicals. That one does, but we need the phone. So does the tape. Uh, I'm going to keep it for now. How many cans of soup do we have? Eleven. God damn, baby. Captain, there is something you need to see. The scanners have picked up a container floating in our vicinity. I wonder what's inside. What now, Captain? Should we try to pull the container on board? Yes, we're going to thumbs that up real quick. And then let's do that. I'm still getting used to this, guys. There's a lot going on here. That mysterious cargo the scanner spotted yesterday is now on board. Opening the box in three, two, one. Oh, a battery. Or at least something that seems to work like a battery. Don't you wonder what the story is there, Captain? One thing's for sure. We are not alone out here. DD remains loyal. You better be loyal, you thotty. Okay, what are we gonna craft, guys? Soup, a lighter, or this Moomoo thing? Uh, maybe we should craft the Moomoo thing. It's an artifact. 
Maybe we might need it down the line. Have you looked in the mirror recently, Captain? Nope. I couldn't help but notice that you seem to be afflicted with a rash of some sort. I hope it's nothing serious, but we can't rule out it being a symptom of a dangerous illness. You can never be too careful. I strongly suggest that you do something about the rash. I swear, I'm the only one worried about your health. It's really not about how weird you look right now. Okay, um, I think I should use the med kit because I don't want anyone going batshit crazy. Not now anyway, because it's way too early for that. If I can use the med kit now, it's easy because I can craft another med kit in the future. That's the cool thing about being able to craft stuff. So my rash is gone, and I made the artifact, and everybody's hungry. Tell me something that I don't know. But let's try to craft another med kit. There we go. And let's see what our task is for today. Oh no, I've been hacked. The virus came in a transmission from the small asteroid. It's taking over flight control and steering us away. Help, Captain! Get it off me! Okay, um, we gotta use our intelligence because we are Emmett and that is his biggest strength. So we might as well utilize that, right? But everybody's hungry, right? What day is it? Day five? They can last one more day. Let's see how long they can last without food before they start dropping like flies. Or should I even try to test that out? Because if they die, then it's no longer a one-take-J situation. You and your crew plugged an emergency console into the hard drive and deleted the virus. Or so you thought. Captain, that was a power outlet. The short circuit damaged the system. It took me six hours and a considerable chunk of our resources to fix the issue. On the bright side, your mistake fried the hard drive instantly. The virus is gone. But we lost 8 of the rocks, 8 of the battery, and 8 of the chemicals. Or actually, 20 of the chemicals. Didi remains loyal. Baby says he is glad to have you as his captain. Better be, baby. I'm a good captain. Two more days for the med kit. Okay. So, it is how many days? Six days? Captain, I've got good news and I've got bad news. The good news is that using the airlock as a space toilet was a success. It's now packed full and ready to be emptied into space. The bad news is that the airlock hatch is jammed. If you don't fix it soon, our clogged toilet will quickly become an extinction level event. It is now or never, Captain. How will you save the human race? Well, I guess we gotta flex tape it. And we also gotta feed everybody. That's four soup cans down the drain. Instead of one full soup can like in 60 seconds, it's actually four. You know what? I gotta let 60 seconds go. We're in space now, baby. I gotta forget about all that. Your attention is required, Captain. This is most abnormal. We are registering unknown transmissions, but I cannot identify who is sending them and more importantly, what they contain. It might be a solar flare interference or worse, a new type of Soviet encryption. We need to decipher these signals as soon as possible. For all we know, our survival depends on it. Who do you want to put in charge of monitoring these communications? Emmett, of course, because he is the genius on board. And I guess I gotta feed everybody because they're starving. Do you guys think I can last one more day without soup? Because I really gotta be stingy with these soup cans. I'm gonna give it one more day. Let me cross my fingers and cross my butt cheeks and hopefully we can survive. Because I know they're starving, but maybe they can starve just a little bit more, right? Nobody's dead? Okay, we made first contact and nobody's dead. And let's see, we got a signal and it's T minus three days. Okay, so we just gotta wait three days, guys. Oxygen level is dropping. We have a malfunctioning filter in the main onboard support circuit for oxygen waste, Moscow for short. I don't know who named it and we cannot rule out sabotage. You should fix it. You can reach Moscow from the zero G space between the hull and the outer deck. Okay, who's the best at fixing things? Can I see stats? Is Tom Thompson good at that? Mm. I don't know. Uh -huh. Baby's good at being a dumbass. I guess I could choose Tom Thompson. One-eyed freak. Okay. Everybody's hungry. But we're just gonna pull that lever, baby. We're gonna fast forward to the next day because we are about to go onto another planet. Tom Thompson is gonna check out whatever he needs to check out. And we are gonna get out of here, guys. Look at that. You guys see that planet in the background? Let's go. Tom bravely sped through zero G, grabbing hold of the broken air filter as surely as a gecko dipped in glue. He pulled hard and was hit by a discharge of pure oxygen. Captain, my senses show that all the oxygen made Tom smarter. Human mind receiving an upgrade is something we should celebrate. Bruh, I just upgraded Tom Thompson? Hooray for me, Billy! Hooray for me! Something's popped up on my scanners. It's a swirly skied planet that lies directly in our path. We are gonna thumbs that up. Yeah. All right, let's do this. Wait, everybody's starving, right? Yeah. Okay, you know what? You're gonna survive one more day. Everybody buckle up. We're about to land on this planet right now, and we are gonna make it, baby. Look at this. That's a huge bitch. Bam. We got this, guys. We don't have a gun. I think we have armor. That's all we have. 
but we're gonna make it. For bonus! On our descent towards the storm-ridden planet, crewmate Thompson piped up and said he recognized the storm below. Looks like our predictions for the Earth after a Soviet nuclear attack, he said with a pause. But with you in command, sir, we can weather anything. With Tom's note in mind, you beautifully directed our craft away from particularly green parts of the atmosphere and onto a safe resting spot on the planet. Unfortunately, however, atmospheric electricity fried the communicator on the way down. Once on the ground, Tom looked out and realized this wasn't at all like a nuclear Soviet attack. This was something else. This planet's surface has experienced a number of wars and traumas, nuclear or otherwise. We'd best be wary while exploring, Captain. And your stomach remains empty. Eat something! Okay, everybody's starving. I think we lost the artifact? It looks broken. I don't see the udders on it. So we are gonna repair the artifacts. And let's see what we got here. We received a pamphlet on our window. Try Ebosin? What the hell's that? Universal shopping from the comfort of your own planet? Okay. Free gift with sign up. Wow, neat. The Ebosin network lets you order pretty much everything except food and water, and it will arrive via portal within one to two galactic business days? Guys, that is dope. There's a catch though. The account creation process requires you to jump through some hoops. I don't like jumping through hoops. You have to leap through a string of temporal portals to become verified. The fine print says that there's no risk of death or dismemberment, but insanity is possible. How do you want to tackle this? Either agility or strength. Okay, we have no strength. We're a weak freaking stick. We do have two agility tally marks, so we're gonna handle it that way. And everybody needs some soup, right? So we're gonna give them some of the good stuff. And hopefully two tally marks is enough to get whatever we need to get from that Ebosin. But we got an achievement progress. Okay, fix it, Felix. Who the hell's Felix? You touched the floor and quickly sprinted through the Ebosin sign-up portal, disappearing into the dimension breach with a flash of blue lightning. Okay, the fine print of the pamphlet expanded to show that it would take one to two galactic business days for your verification to process, at which time you could begin your universal shopping experience. The pamphlet then expanded again to define one galactic business day as 525, 600 million minutes or 1,000 Earth years? What? Finally, the pamphlet scanned the shuttle to see if you qualified for the promised free gift and determined you did not. When you asked why not, the pamphlet said you had violated the terms of service but refused to explain further. What, did I get naked? Did I swing my dick around? Then it vanished in a cloud of annoying paradoxes. Are you serious? Look guys, I just fed them and they're still hungry. That's crazy, that is madness. I have no resources, okay. We have to recycle. We gotta get that chemical stuff. Let me see here, oh man. This is a no good. I guess I can recycle the armor because food is more important. Oh man, I don't even know. We're experiencing minor technical difficulties with the communications console. In other words, we are completely deaf and blind. I cannot pinpoint the origin of this malfunction, but I am registering an intensifying tonal signal. Captain, it's a bomb! The countdown will be over soon. Do something, Captain! Okay, I don't have a gun, and I'm about to recycle this. Actually, no. Hell no. Not on my watch, baby. Let's cancel that, and then let's use the armor. You pulled the bomb out and wrapped it in the protective layer of armor. The muffled kaboom was scary, but no one is hurt. How is the armor holding up? Oh, to shreds, you say. Captain, this is not the first time an incident like this happened. Yeah, I'm tired of all these bad things happening to us one by one. It's still dumb. Okay, let's make the soup. And let's see what we got over here. Okay, so they want us to get the minerals that are on the tic-tac-toe board. Yes, we're gonna do that. Actually, did I confirm that? Okay, there you go. And I forgot to send somebody to scavenge. So let's see here. Oh my god, that's gonna take a long time though. Look at that, guys. Three clocks. I don't know how long that is, but three clocks is never a good thing. This is only gonna take one clock, but the chance for stuff is some dog shit. So I am going to choose Radio Zone. And then we are gonna send Baby Bronco because he's a tough guy. We always like a good old tough guy. And I have nothing to give you, but I'm gonna give you my good luck. I'm gonna give you my love. So I confirmed that already. And let's confirm this. And I need to make another can of soup today. But it says that we dismantled the tic-tac-toe game and we got 20 of the rock mineral. And we got some soup. Okay. So we can't make that right now. Recycle. I, I guess I can recycle the armor. And Captain, a hole appeared right next to our shuttle overnight. It's producing smelly vapors and a nasty gurgling. While it's not an immediate threat, I'd appreciate it if you made a stop. The smell is foul, the noise annoying, and both offend my sensors. Okay. We don't want you to be offended, so we are gonna flex tape that. Day 21. Oh my god, Dee Dee died? Her injuries were too severe? 
She didn't even look like she was hurting. Captain, the mysterious signal detected nearby turned out to be aliens. The chatter sounds like walkie-talkie comms emanating from a ruined alien tunnel that runs off into deep darkness. What would you like to explore the tunnel with? Some protection, a weapon, or a light source would be wise as a bare minimum. Okay, we have a lighter. That's the only thing that we can use. And we're about to get into contact with some aliens. That doesn't sound good. Like, if we really got in contact with aliens, do you guys think that they would be friendly or would they be hostile? I feel like if aliens came to us, we'd be pointing our guns at them. And we'd be like, what the hell are you doing here? You went creeping into the alien tunnel nearby with trepidation i don't even know what the hell that word means you had only just come upon a warp station platform when a group of aliens appeared and aimed weapons at you see i told you guys they must have been watching us for some time as they were able to speak in broken approximated english okay lucky for us that they can speak english they said they need our help they run vac train central a planet-wide vacuum tunnel system that links to countless supply stockpiles all over fobonos however the inhabitants of neighboring silo 476 are too dangerous to connect with apparently Apparently the war that wrecked this world was started by the 476ers over 200 years ago. They asked for our help when the time comes. Okay, so that must be an ending, helping the aliens. So baby's rested, Emmett looks like he's dying, he's weak and starving. What about you? You're starving and weak. Okay, let's make some soup for you. And Astro Citizen Protocol dictates that every piece of equipment must be regularly checked by breakages, extraterrestrial parasites, space-time glitches, and spells by witches. One of these checks is now overdue, what with all the cosmic shenanigans. We should check some of our gear and Baby seems idle. Is there anything he should check? Um, I feel like if he checks something, he's gonna wreck it. So I'm gonna say no. And then we're gonna feed Tom Thompson because I haven't fed him in a while. And I think I'm making another can of soup. So that one goes straight to Emmett. He is priority number one. Oh my god, he's dead. Bitch. The end. This is dumb. I should have just fed Emmett. I'm mad at myself, guys. I'm mad at myself for not giving Emmett the food. Damn it! The mysterious signal detected nearby turned out to be aliens. Oh god. The chatter sounds like walkie talkie comms. Okay. Um, I don't have the lighter, but I have the ray gun. I don't want to go doog 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 doog. So hopefully I don't do that. I don't want to shoot first, ask questions later. So hopefully we're good. And let's give Emma some soup. We don't want a repeat of last time to where I gave soup to the wrong guy and then Emmett died. Not long after you left to explore the tunnel nearby, gun in hand, an explosion rang out and dust billowed forth from its dark mouth. You came stumbling out, bleeding and bruised. You found a warp train platform and met some phobians who didn't like the gun you hoisted. They fired upon you and destroyed the tunnel you were in. Close call, Captain. No! They were good guys! Come on, man. They were good aliens. Don't be like that. I'm gonna recycle the book, man. Nobody reads in space. You found a couple of rusted and swollen cans of soup in the darkest corner of the ship. Someone must have put them there a long time ago and then completely forgotten about them. It doesn't look all that safe to eat, but then again, it's canned soup. It's supposed to last for 737 years. Will you keep the cans? Yes. If it's supposed to last that long, then I think we should be okay, right? And I think I can last another day without feeding them, so we're good to go. Fight. Oh my god, Tom Thompson's dead. He died from starvation. I said they could last one more day and it's not true. And baby died from starvation. Oh my god! But the cans are good! I have enough for Emmett! It says here, a masked creature from Silo 476 approaches and states they will be making an attack on the evil phobians in Vac Train Central in a few days. Crucial to their plan is a drill to tunnel between stations and ambush them. They have been low on power for years, and the drill demands 40 megawatts to function optimally. Share power with Silo 476? Um, I feel like these are bad guys. You know what? I'm just gonna say yes because I want to get rescued and we're still making the med kit So let's give Emma some of that. Can I use the sock puppet? No, I can't. Oh my god I feel like we're helping the bad guys here Like this masked creature might be the equivalent of raiders from 60 seconds, but I don't know guys I just want to get an ending. I want to see the end of something Thanking, thanking, thanking. The little wrapped up alien muttered to us when you offered a hefty canister of fuel for their attack on Vac Train Central. Okay, so we gave them 40 of our energy. It said they will be making their attack in a few days and will call when we're needed. It shuffled away back into its fallout shelter. 
Imagine living out your last days in a depressing bunker like that. Truth is stranger than fiction, sir. You are still alert and you should eat something, Captain. Okay, so I'm not crazy yet. I'm with two of my dead teammates, but I'm not crazy yet. That's a good sign. Something fell from the sky in a flash, and now you are surprised we are surrounded by a swarm of red wing somethings. Of course, I anticipated this. This is scenario number 87394B. The small creatures are flying into our walls in waves, causing the hull to reverberate like a speaker. Are you God? They reverberate. For generations, we have been searching for the one who thinks outside the hive. Each jump from planet to planet decimates us. Are you the one? I, for one, believe you deserve a cult following, Captain, but the choice is yours. Oh, so if I have the artifact, then I can be a cult leader. Well, too bad, so sad I don't have that. But we do have one can of soup and we have a med kit. I think we're in a good spot here, guys. The swarm of tiny red flies spoke to you through the hull's vibration. You answered by shouting through the window, which obviously was not an adequate response. The swarm repeated its initial question louder and louder. Fast on your track to becoming deaf, you threw a couple of insults and a can of soup to the aliens. The latter worked. The swarm followed the trail of leaking soup, accepting your involuntary peace offering with angry flight patterns. The soup conquers all yet again. So we lost one can of soup? Are you kidding me? But well, we got another can of soup. So, oh man, I don't have enough to make soup. I guess we're gonna get rid of uh, the flex tape. We don't really need that that bad. And we came across one of the planet's apparent inhabitants. The alien carrying a heavy looking case entered a nearby bunker looking structure and you followed. He left his armor like suit and the case on a rack with a multitude of other suits and cases. The alien is apparently taking a shower. Act fast. Will you snatch one of the suits and run or force a random case open? I'd rather force a random case open. Actually wait, do I have a suit? I have a gun, but I don't have a suit. I guess we could take the suit and run like a pussy, but we have to feed Emmett. So here you go. So we fed him, we took the suit and ran, and hopefully that was successful. Hopefully the alien didn't jump out the shower and beat us with his alien dick or something. Your bunker visit went poorly. While indecisively staring at various sized suits on the rack, the alien re-emerged and you had to flee before the bunker door closed behind you. Depending on how you cut it, the lesson here is don't steal from random strangers, or if you do steal from random strangers, be better at it. Hard to say which it is. Okay, but we got some stuff to make some soup, so that's exactly what we're gonna do. And the alien from Silo 476 came running back to the shuttle. This is the moment. They're making their attack. The drill is powering up to bore into Vac Train Central. You promptly run off with the masked being and return a few hours later with good news. The attack was a success. The Phobians at Vac Train Central have been captured or killed. The problem is that they can't get the Vac Trains running properly. Vac Train Central's last resort was to sabotage the system. Who should we send to try and solve the strange lock on the Vac Train system? Well, luckily we have Emmett here who's a genius. So he's gonna go there and I think this should be an ending. I'm crossing my fingers. It's day 38, come on now, please. What happened? Yeah. Did I get rescued? I think I got rescued, guys. You did it! You solved the lock that Vac Train Central's inhabitants put on the global Vac Train system before they were defeated. The system is now functioning. Within a couple of stops on the smooth vacuum pulled train with the 476ers, you found a huge warehouse hundreds of stories deep, brimming with food, materials, and resources. There was enough to last hundreds of years at least. We're no longer living on the wire. Survival is ensured, Captain. Congratulations on the successful operation. Crafting completed new item available soup. Let's freaking go! We got an ending, baby. I told you I was not going to end this episode until we got an ending. And those are the aliens that we helped. I did not expect them to be that freaking small. Oh, and we got some words here. And so this Cold War thawed and ended with a warm, fuzzy feeling. Captain Emmett Ellis arrived on Fobonos, befriended the locals, killed some other locals, and then activated a long slumbering global transport system. How living in comfort and security, nuclear winter aside, Emmett will go down in Phobian history as the tall alien who came, saw, and ushered in a new era of prosperity and safety on this wrecked world. And there's actually more here. Tom went to space in hopes of becoming the greatest galactic adventurer, and he did in a way, only he didn't survive to tell the tale, which was very unlike him. Poor Dee Dee Star was extinguished before it ever had a chance to truly light up. Her loss hit Emmett hard. Captain Ellis moped around for a whole week before eventually moving on. While baby Bronco didn't get to share Captain Ellis' ultimate triumph, the memory of him lived on. The legend of the giant with the kindest of hearts echoed across the galaxy, shaping future generations of intergalactic adventurers and bodybuilders. 
Even though he successfully guided the Astro Citizen mission through all the soup shortages and other misadventures, Emmett still wanted more. He wanted science, and so he became the most renowned soup scientist around. Not that he had much of a competition. It seems like ages have passed since four amateur astronauts had left Earth's orbit expecting certain doom. Now, the brave captain look into the future with devout optimism. As one tale comes to a close, another begins. I actually like that. I like that it gave endings to every single character. So if you survive with like two people, then two people survive and then it changes the ending even more. And then if three people survive, all four survive. I'm actually gonna try to get an ending where all four people survive. That's gonna be really tough because I think this game is way harder than 60 seconds. But if you guys want to see another episode where I try to get a new ending and try to have everybody survive, make sure you guys give this video one big fat like. And tell a friend today that Jay from the Cubs, guys, is dead too!